Welcome to Manchester's Museum of Science and Industry. It shows how this has always been a city where science meets innovation. Its Victorian cotton mills were a beacon of modernization at the time, weaving this path towards industrialization. It's a city which has witnessed the most incredible discoveries and creations. And then, of course, there's graphene the wonder material that was isolated here in Manchester. It's 200 times stronger than steel, more conductive than copper, and a million times thinner than a human hair. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, these are all stories about what is possible when you combine science and technology with a desire to push the boundaries and create something new and something better. That desire to push the boundaries is very much alive and well in Manchester. The university is a world leader in advanced materials research and home to the International Centre for Advanced Materials, known as ICAM. BP is approaching the fifth year in a 10-year partnership with ICAM, underpinned by a $100 million investment. It's a partnership that's delivering results. One of the special aspects of this partnership is it's founded on four universities and a major world player, each with different capabilities. So we have expertise in Imperial, for example, on membranes, that's unique. We have expertise in Cambridge, where we can look at surfaces in unparalleled detail. We have activity in Illinois, looking at coatings and hearing corrosion. And you bring those three or four different topics together, and suddenly you can develop completely new concepts. That's the really exciting thing. And the fact that BP isn't simply looking in at a distance, but it's actively involved in mentoring and de delivering that science really adds to the value of the project. So each university is bringing deep expertise to the partnership. It was time to get on my bike to discover more, quite literally, as it turns out. Well, what we're going to do an experiment on here is how much energy it takes to recover water either by evaporation, which we're going to use here, or by using membrane technology here. Okay. So we have two bicycles. So All right. let's go down our bicycles. All right. Why do I get the feeling that I'm being really set up? Well, there could be something in there. <laughs> let's start cycling. <laughs> All right. So through ICAM, what we've been doing is researching the nature of these membranes, how they work, why they work, and how we can make them more efficient. And what we've found is that the membrane is a, a large sandwich, but the bit that actually does the separation is the very, very thin film at the top of the membrane, which is the all-important part which separates, in our case, salt from water. So you will use a lot less energy, as you can see here. I'm producing a lot more water than you are, and I'm putting a lot less effort in, I have to say. So you can see that the benefit will be that if we can use membranes more and more widely as we further develop and understand them, there'll be major savings in energy. The application of Andrew's work at Imperial College extends well beyond water filtration. These membranes could be used more efficiently to separate oil and water, or in wastewater treatment, bringing significant benefit to BP. It's time to leave the bike behind and head east towards historic Cambridge. Academics at the university there supported the recent launch of BP's best ever range of dirt busting fuels which contain active technology. Its active molecules are designed to attach themselves to the metal surfaces of clean engines, forming a protective layer which stops dirt binding onto the metal. The team at Cambridge provided BP with valuable insights into the fuel additive performance in engines. Our colleagues in Imperial tell us about what the surfaces are we have to worry about. We then provide a fundamental insight in what the molecules are doing on those surfaces those in turn, that information feeds into our modelling colleagues up in Manchester who can then put that into their models to test them and then also give us new ideas to test and try. So that's how these three universities particularly help uh, in that aspect. The Illinois group give us new surfaces to play with that we can understand as well. And that's all uh, in dialogue with our commercial colleagues in BP, our BP mentors, who can distill that and find its relevance for the, the real challenges that BP face. The work at the University of Cambridge allow us to understand how 
the molecules that we put in the fuels, the additives that we put in the fuels, protect the surfaces, form monolayers, and stop dirt uh, adhering to the engine surfaces. The progress that we're seeing through ICAM is incredibly exciting. In the US, scientists from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign have developed self-healing coatings for metals and pipelines which protect against corrosion. This is a, a topic that we sort of pioneered years ago now in polymers. Uh, and these are materials that uh, when they get damaged, they heal themselves. They are solid-like, but if you squeeze them between two slides, then you can see that there's a reasonable quantity of liquid that is present in that what appears to be a solid material. You have capsules that stay essentially metastable in the material until the environment causes a stress that causes them to rupture, release their contents, and the science is in what comes out and basically reacts. We started with self-healing paints and coatings. And these are coatings that you would put on a metal is something that you'd like to protect. And these kinds of coatings will uh, heal themselves when they've got scratch damage. The end result is a much longer lifetime for whatever you've, you've uh, put the paint onto. What's clear is that advanced materials are going to enable us to do things we've not been able to do before. So I really passionately believe that by understanding a material fundamentally and how it operates will lead to improved integrity of our operations, our more efficient operations, and also could open up new business opportunities for us. If we had a steel which didn't corrode or rust, didn't become brittle, we could have a pipeline uh, in the sea for 30 years and not have to worry about it. If we had materials which could sense things going wrong and tell us straight away what's happening, then that would be fantastic. The ICAM partnership has significantly increased our knowledge and understanding at the cutting edge of advanced materials. The benefits to BP and industry are clear. So the relationship between the university and the BP ICAM is important for a number of different reasons. Firstly, it's a very important research relationship. It's discovering new things that we hope will be of benefit to BP and in some cases much more widely. Secondly, the partnership is not just with BP, it's with two other British universities and a university in the United States. And I'm particularly keen on fostering partnerships across multiple organisations. Another important aspect is that without the BPI CAM, I doubt we would have had any chance of getting the Sir Henry Royce Institute for Advanced Materials. Obviously, graphene and two-dimensional materials was one factor, but having the BPI CAM was undoubtedly another factor. The people who worked at those cotton mills could never have predicted the sophistication of the technology that we see today. Equally, we don't know what our future is going to look like it's yet to be written. That's why this work is so important. It's work that's already being applied to BP's operations in upstream and downstream. Group Technologies' business development team is also exploring ways for BP to commercialise the innovation coming out of ICAM. Much has been achieved in the first five years and BP is the stronger for it. What legacy will be left at the end of this 10-year partnership will only be limited by our imagination.